it is time for me to go on a rant because what happened? I don't know. I'm going to keep my voice down, but what happened? I cannot believe my eyes witnessed what I witnessed yesterday. That Knicks game was the worst loss I've ever seen coming from the Knicks. That I don't I understand the Knicks were injured and the the Pacers were just taking advantage of all the injuries, but that get loss was unbelievable. The Pacers like it, it it's there's no other way to describe it. Like the Knicks are just cursed. The franchise is cursed. Being a fan of New York teams is just a curse. They all lose in the end. I don't understand how like if the I cannot help but think that if the Knicks were healthy, then the series would have played so differently. And what I can't stand the most is how Tyrese Halliburton is talking and bra- and bragging and boasting about it like it's a big deal that he beat an injured Knicks team. Like the injured Knicks took you to seven games and honestly the Knicks should have won the series regardless of what happened but in game three that was the turning point of the entire series because that step back three had no right going in whatsoever the Pacers became the first team in NBA history to score 70 plus points in the first half of a game seven That's never happened in the history of basketball. They became the first team to ever do it. And I I simply, I can't believe it. Like, it only happens on, it only happens towards the Knicks. Only happens to the Knicks. I don't understand how, why, like, it only happens. I, mm, it's just, it's sadness, it's pain, it's misery all the way through. 76.3% from the field to end the half. This is the highest in any playoff halves in the last 25 seasons. Like, this was the best team shooting performance ever in a playoff game when it was all said and done. And, of course, they do it on the Knicks. I cannot understand how this happens. It's just, it's bad luck, misery all the way through. But... I do actually have a theory as to why it always happens to New York and it always happens to the Knicks. It's because of Madison Square Garden. Now, you guys might not understand what I'm saying when I I say this, but every superstar that has ever lived always has their calendar scratched for Madison Square Garden. Like, they always circle their calendar when they're going to play the Knicks because they know that the Knicks are going to have a sold-out crowd, regardless of how bad they are, and the game is going to be very... It's going to be all over the media, and everyone is going to see you, and everybody is going to want you to perform. Like, this is why Michael... Michael Jordan actually said it himself. He loves playing... In Madison Square Garden. So, if anything, like, that somewhat removes the home court advantage that the Knicks could have in any kind of scenario. Because everybody always has the calendar circle for when they're going to play in Madison Square Garden. Because everyone would love to play in Madison Square Garden. Like, it's just, and put on a show to everyone in attend for everyone in attendance. Like, Kobe's done it. James Harden has done it. Reggie Miller has obviously done it. Michael Jordan, as I mentioned previously, he's done it. LeBron has done it. I mean, Russell Westbrook has done it. There's so many players that do it on Ma- in Madison Square Garden. And, like, it just completely negates the home court advantage that a lot of these players have throughout the entirety of the regular season. Like... Imagine having to deal with everybody's A game every single given night. It's going to drain you. And on top of it draining you, 
the minutes that Thibodeau is giving a lot of these players are also going to drain them. I mean, granted, I personally do not blame Thibs for the injuries that occurred. I understand that if you don't want your players to get injured, then resting them is the safest option. But you also have to remember that this league used to, like, it it used to be um, a given, or it used to be the norm for every single starter to play 82 games, and it used to be the norm for every single starter to play so many minutes in a game and not to sit out. Like, that was the norm back in the day, and now you're telling me in this day and age, like, people can't play back-to-back-to-back games and, like, play 82 games in a season or, like, finish the game with, like, 40-plus minutes? Like, I don't think that's... I don't think that's really right to just blame it on Thibs for the fact that the player gets injured. I mean, the player should also know how to protect his or her... I mean, because we do play... Because now it's WNBA as well. His or her body... Just adjusting the light because, you know, this the sun might shift over to the left a little bit but an athlete should know how to take care of their own body and be available for the team whenever you need that availability and that was the biggest problem for this team it was injuries and I cannot help but think that the Knicks could have 100% won this series had everyone been healthy I mean they the Pacers just took advantage and they just ran away with that win Like, they just ran away with the win in the series. And it's just, it's unlucky. It's unlucky if you're a Knicks fan. It's incredibly lucky if you're a Pacers fan. I cannot stand Halliburton. I simply cannot stand that Pacers team. I don't like them. You guys know this. I haven't liked them whatsoever, like, at all throughout any point in the series. I have not liked them whatsoever. And the fact that they've made it all the way to the Eastern Conference Finals... And what makes what makes this even sadder is that I'm going to have to turn into a Boston Celtics fan because I don't want to see the Pacers in the finals. I do not want to see that team, the team that beat my New York Knicks in the finals. I do not want to see that. I don't. I don't. It is just, it's painful. It happens almost every single time. It's painful. And it never, it, you you think you'd get used to it, but it just, it you never do. It never fails. And I don't, <clears throat> moment of silence. Because Jalen Brunson was also taken out in this game. Like, he got injured, he broke his, uh, he broke his hand going, um, like, late in the fourth quarter, and obviously, like, when the best player breaks his hand late in the fourth, that is definitely going to seal the game. I knew the game was over the second he broke his hand, and he didn't play that well in this game either, might I add. I mean, for an elimination game, granted, this was a ridiculously historic game coming in from the Pacers, and it was like, nobody in their right mind Nobody in the history of the sport, other than maybe the Kevin Durant Warriors in 2017, were going to beat the Pacers tonight. They were dialed in. They just, they played better, they shot better, they moved the ball quicker. They didn't even need defense because the Knicks were playing so bad that it didn't even matter how many points they, um, the Knicks were scoring because they were just scoring more. Jalen Brunson, again, 17 points on 17 shots. Very poor shooting. And Miles McBride, also very poor from the field, 4 for 14. But DiVincenzo, he almost had 40 in this game, but it was for nothing because they got blown out by 20. And Alec Burks, he played his heart out too. I mean, he shot 8 for 13 from the field and 26 points. He tried his best, but it wasn't enough. It just wasn't. So this is the sadness. This is the pain. This is the. This is what being a Knicks fan is all about. This is what being, not even a Knicks fan, this is what's being a New York fan is all about. Just full of nothing but disappointment. But at least we still have the Yankees who are playing very, very, very well. If you guys um, want to hear more about basketball, you guys can go ahead and watch, um, you can go ahead and watch Sam's podcast on the baseball podcast. That was a very it was a very, um, he's, he's very good with the podcast, really like his show. Go ahead and watch it. I fully recommend it. And with that, we are 
out of time and I am done ranting about New York losing. I don't want to talk about this ever again. I don't ever want, I don't want to see the Pacers win a single game against the Boston Celtics. I want the Celtics to hand the belt right to them, sweep them, get them out of here. They do not deserve to be in, like get them out of here. Just just gone. I don't want them here. Uh, and obviously like there is a bunch of there's a lot of bias going into that, but like please just get them out. But I'll talk a little bit more about the possibilities of the Celtics, the Pacers, and every other team that's in between winning the championship. But in the second segment, we're going to talk about the other Game 7 that happened shortly after, which was the Game 7 between the Timberwolves and the Denver Nuggets. The outcome was also just as unexpected as I thought. So I will be right back after this short break. I feel like I'm losing my mind Is everybody in the world blind? Please, Lord, give me a sign A sign I feel like I'm losing my mind Is everybody in the world blind? Please, Lord, give me a sign A sign I wanna be the greatest. Everybody on the face shit. I look around and feel like everybody is the fakest. I make this every day and I'm impatient. Hoping one day I blow up from the basement. Statement, the top is so vacant. I don't hear shit that I think is amazing. Waiting for my day when I'm playing. Sold out shows for a thousand faces. Hey, give me that crown. Get in my way and to be put down. It ain't your place, all this my town. If I want that shit, then I'll get it right now. I'm losing it. The news, if it's some loose shit, a stupid myth. You choose to live or choose to dip. You choose to fight or lose your grip and lose a gift. Oh. I feel like I'm losing my mind Is everybody in the world blind? Please, Lord, give me a sign A sign I feel like I'm losing my mind Is everybody in the 